Hey everybody, what's good? Today we're looking at this bad boy, the M1 Pro 16 inch base model. Let's go. How is it going guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Hey everybody, what's good? Dave here. I recently bought an M1 Pro 16 inch. Let's go through some of the stuff. This is probably the first time I buy a brand new MacBook Pro. Usually I'm like a year, two years behind, like buying stuff secondhand off eBay. But this time around, after the performance I saw from the M1s, I was like, these new machines are going to be something else. I've watched over 20, 30 videos about these and everybody raves about them. Them. So I jumped on it and sold a lot of stuff and bought this bad boy and I want to show you guys what I found about it. One of the first pros is battery life. This thing is insane, especially going from a previous model, a 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch with the upgraded graphics card. This thing is insane. I worked at it full pelt for about four or five hours, took it to the coffee shop, didn't even have to plug it in and I came back home and I think it had about 37% battery. Amazing, didn't lose any performance. Following that, multitasking, it's insane. I went to the local coffee shop and sat down, worked on some After Effects projects, did some rotoscoping, tracking, edited some videos. While exporting the videos, I was running all those tasks as well as editing some audio. And this thing didn't lose a beat. The cool thing about it is everybody goes on about rendering times and all that, and those are a lot faster. But the key thing for me is when I'm rendering, I want to be able to still work and I don't want any glitches on my machine. With my previous machine, I'd export something, go have a cup of coffee for like 15, 20 minutes and then come back. It's exported. I can go back to working on stuff. With this bad boy, multitasking is insane. I'll export while working on other stuff. It doesn't miss a beat. I can watch videos on YouTube while exporting. This is a huge, huge thing for me because already I feel like I'm saving time and I'm getting more out of my working day with just using this laptop. Just to give you guys a quick example, I've turned on screen recording. This is a video that I edited and finished. I'm gonna export this bad boy in 4K while that's exporting. And I wanna show you guys how smooth this is. So this is me working on my timeline. If I want to scroll across, I can. If I wanna delete anything, shorten anything. As you can see, there's no lag while it's exporting. And if I go into my Ableton and edit some audio, there's no lag whatsoever right here, which is really cool. It really is a game changer for me. And then let's take it a step further. Say you would like to open up After Effects and do some rotoscoping or whatever. So let's take this clip. Let me just duplicate it and replace with an After Effects composition. So while that's exporting and I've got my Premiere Pro open, you can see how smooth the timeline is. So I've opened up After Effects. What I'm going to do is just to put it through its paces, I'm going to come in, do some rotoscoping. and then freeze that. So while that's freezing and establishing that rotoscope, I'm gonna come in and I wanna show you guys how smooth Ableton still is. Cause this way you'd see it when you're doing all these fine cuts and scrolling across. I've got my rendering still going, got Premiere Pro still pretty smooth. It's at full at 4K, not lagging at all. Let's export through Premiere Pro as well and see if we can get this to buckle. So I'm exporting on Media Encoder, Premiere Pro. I've got After Effects doing uh, rotoscoping. And then I've got Ableton Live where I'd usually edit my podcast. And still, this is working smooth as. So personally, I probably wouldn't be doing all this stuff at the same time. I don't know what else you'd throw at this thing. Let's go on YouTube and check out some videos. No lag whatsoever on the actual video. It just keeps rolling, no glitching. So let's keep that going and go to Ableton. Still Ableton's not glitching. I can zoom in, out, I can select, no glitching at all. So yeah, pretty good. This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Those guys are awesome. They've got millions of assets for your videos, stock videos, video templates, motion graphics, graphics. I use them all the time and trust me, it saved me so much time and energy. I don't have to go down the YouTube rabbit hole if a green screen asset, it's done. I just go into Envato Elements to keep everything organized for me download it, use it, no questions asked, unlimited downloads. For $16.50 a month, you can't go wrong. It's a no-brainer. For me, it's a no-brainer. Check it out, links in the description. Let's get back to the video. Another pro is the fast SSDs. Now, I went for a 512 gigabyte model. I kind of wish I went for a one terabyte because the SSDs in these things are a lot faster than any external SSD you might get. I work off the extreme 
Pro portable SSDs by SanDisk. And these are really, really fast. And they still work really great with editing and all that kind of stuff. There's no lag and scrolling. But just knowing that these SSDs inside are a lot faster, any chance I get, I will load up a project on my laptop and then I'll work on it from the internal SSD. So yeah, I kind of wish I went for the one terabyte instead of the 512, but I was trying to keep the price down. So yeah, it's still good, still good. Another thing is we've got the SD card back, means less dongles. It's got three USB-C ports, a MagSafe, headphones, and an SD card slot. So chances are you're probably not gonna need dongles unless you need like ethernet or USB-A stuff. It's not the fastest SD card port, but it's a lot faster I found than any kind of expensive dongle you'll get. So still faster, it still save you time. I'll take it. Another thing is MagSafe is back so we can charge via MagSafe or USB-C. At the moment, I'm using a CalDigit TS3 Plus dock and I use one cable for everything, monitors, extra ports, and charging it at the same time. It only gives me 87 watts worth of power, but that seems to be enough without it having to tap into the internal battery. If I'm honest, I haven't used the brick that comes with it. It's an 140 watt brick and it's still in my bag. If I need to use it, it charges faster than USB-C. It'll charge it to 50% in half an hour or full 100% in an hour and a half. This thing is silent. I went for the 16 inch over the 14 inch. I've watched so many videos about it and I kind of concluded that it was worth me spending the extra cash for the screen real estate. Plus this bad boy comes with bigger fans and a bigger cooling pipe, which means it's gonna cool a lot faster. And even though you might get the same performance out of 14 inch and a 16 inch, you might like having like something smaller and that's totally cool. But for me, because I knew I'd use this thing and you know, put it through its paces, I kind of needed that extra cooling ability that this laptop would have. And plus the chassis, if you've seen, is a lot thicker than previous models, which kind of helps with the airflow. Plus being involved in video and audio production, especially in audio production when you're recording, you're trying to keep everything as silent as possible. So not having the fans going while recording is a huge plus. Another thing is the camera and mic are a lot better. You've probably seen videos by now. It's an 180p camera and the mic is a lot better. It sounds a lot better. So all your conference calls or Zoom calls, you could just use the laptop. No external mics, no external cameras. It just works. So that's what we need. The display, this bad boy looks insanely good. You definitely can't see it, but when you're working on this bad boy, it feels amazing. The refresh rate goes up to 120 Hertz, but with the ProMotion technology, it doesn't use it if it doesn't need to. So that will save your battery, save your resources. That's really cool. The only thing about it is, and we're kind of tapping into some of the cons. When I'm using it with my dock, I kind of experience some glitchy stuff on my monitor. Now I never saw this from my previous MacBook. I don't know if it's software related. I don't know if it's the dock that needs to be updated. I checked all that stuff and nobody seems to have that problem. So I turned off ProMotion, turned it back on, and it still seems to do it. So I'll keep my eye out for any updates. It's not a huge thing, but it's something I did notice. It'll glitch out every now and then, but hopefully they update it soon and they sort it out. Following that, even though the display goes up to 120 Hertz, it's capped to 60 Hertz to external monitors. So that might be a factor for you guys. Personally, it doesn't bother me that much. But if you're doing gaming and all that stuff, that might be something you want to consider. Another little con that I think is going to get much better in the future is third party plugins and programs seem to be a tiny bit glitchy, but nowhere near what it was like when the M1 came out. Because I do audio and video production, I had to be really careful upgrading to the M1 and making sure all my stuff works. Most of my audio stuff just works fine without having to upgrade it. So I've got pretty much everything working. Waves is working, Ableton is working, Isotope stuff is working. So far, so good. I'm pretty happy with how everything is operating. As far as video production goes, everything seems to be working smooth. All the Adobe stuff is now optimized. After Effects has a new frame blending, which I've noticed is a lot faster rendering. Premiere Pro is super smooth, and I'm happy with how the exports go and how my workflow is working out within Premiere. The only thing is Dynamic Link seems to be having a bit of a glitch, which I think it'll be in future updates. It seems to be working when you're in the project, but then when you come out and reopen the project, it seems to be glitching out. So I'm pretty sure they'll sort that out in a future update. And then we come to stuff I feel a bit neutral about. 
the notch. Everybody's complaining about the notch and how it looks and all that stuff. But to be honest, when you start working on the computer, you don't even notice it. If you do notice it, you can just download a third party plugin. I downloaded Top Notch, turn it on, and then it turns the menu bar black so you can't really see the notch. If anything, I feel like with the notch, they've given us extra real estate in the screen, which we wouldn't have before. So I'm not complaining. I, I'm pretty neutral. I, I think it's fine. The other thing is the touch bar. They have got rid of the touch bar. I don't miss the touch bar because my touch bar kind of went glitchy and started flashing and stuff. And then when it did work, it was nice having something with a slider you can adjust or finding your emojis faster. So I do miss that, but I, I don't care. It's fine. I can live without it. As long as my machine works, I'm fine with that. So that's it guys, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like and subscribe. If you have any more questions about the M1 Pro or anything, just drop them in the comments. For me, I feel like the M1 Pro is a good investment. I feel like it's already saving me time and my workflow is a lot smoother. So I think I'm gonna see a return very soon on that. Thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. Check the links in the description. If you wanna say hi to me personally, I hang out on Instagram most of the time. Dave the Greco is the handle. Till next time, peace.